Are you tired? Depressed? Are voices whispering unholy evils in your mind at night? Sounds like you have parasites. And what you need is Crygon, the tablet that goes down smooth and takes them out rough. Crygon, for all your mental health needs. Who claims he was killed during the Bowling Green massacre? I, I wouldn't call myself a survivor. You wouldn't? No. Then what are you? I died. But if you died, you are talking to me right now. I. I don't understand it either, but. I felt it. You felt it? I felt my life slipping away. I felt the pain. I saw the darkness. I was. I was dead. But Robert, there was no news on this. This did not happen. It happened to me. We will talk more about this after break. By necessity, I live in isolation. Still, I must rely on the outside world to survive. Every month a boat comes to this rock in the sea, bringing fresh food and water. By technicality, I am an employee of the state. The maintenance of this slowly spinning searchlight falls to me alone. I do my duty as best I can. Gazing out across the inky black ocean, the irony of this work is not lost on me. The beacon that I maintain is a guide to home, but also a warning to stay away. Connection at a distance. By necessity, by choice, I live in liminal space, balancing precariously between being a part of the world and cutting myself off from it, unable to commit to either. Many times the waves have called to me, there have been times where I've longed for the same mercy that the waves have shown to the crabs that wash up on the shore. But if I were to die, I cannot say what would happen. Survival has become more than an instinct. It has become a duty, and sometimes that duty is all too heavy. Good evening. You are listening to the Switchboard, 
connecting all points in humanity's ongoing voyage into the unknown. I am the host, and it is 17 years since the beginning of the end. Our position is tenuous. I don't mean humanity as a whole. Not yet. Our species is resilient and adaptable. I mean yours and mine. Those of us who know the truth of the world. We all have one thing in common, whether you sought out the truth or had the truth forced upon you when some creature took interest. Each and every one of us is under direct threat from one entity or another. Many of us are under threat from more than one. Whether you are running from a single entity or have taken it upon yourself to catalogue the supernatural, or bolder still are attempting to hunt these entities, we all have that in common. None of us are likely to see old age, our position is tenuous. We cannot pass on what we know to younger generations without risking their lives in the process. We are so few and far between, we can rarely call for help without pulling innocent people into our world. We can, in good conscience, rely only upon one another. The spirit of community in isolation is what the switchboard stands for. Together, we have hope. Maintaining that hope is our duty, however heavy it may become. In our last broadcast, we began looking into the globally occurring phenomenon known as the Black Freighter. We began by recounting the experience of Damien Sutcliffe, this time I would like to delve more into the possible origins of the ship itself. Generally reported as being a, a massive scale, built from heavy steel with large gun embankments on the front and rear, the Black Freighter does not resemble a freighter, so much as a Dreadnought-class battleship. Most reports agree with Sutcliffe's assessment. The ship is in an amazing, pristine and sterile condition, despite seeming to be entirely abandoned though perhaps abandoned is not quite the right word. It implies that there were people there at some point, but everyone who has ever been aboard the Black Freighter has said that there was no sign that it was ever occupied by man or beast. Despite this, the great stacks in the middle of the vessel still belch great clouds of steam, the engine still running with seemingly nobody to maintain it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Attempts have been made... <coughs> to move the Black Freighter when it was blocking shipping lanes or harbours. On the 2nd of January 1966, the Black Freighter appeared in another port, this time in the port city of Yangon, Burma, also known as the Republic of Myanmar. You must understand the Yangon city port is the busiest cargo port in Burma, and that Burma is a nation that has suffered dozens of invasions and civil wars in its recent history. The sudden presence of a huge foreign battleship, however outdated in design, in their main commercial port was not, it was not only disruptive to business, it was a frightening prospect. The ship was hailed and ordered to leave, not only the port but also Burmese waters, reportedly in a dozen languages. Predictably, however, the hulking vessel remained silent. Tensions were rising, no government was admitting to owning the vessel. Eventually the authorities decided the only solution was to shell the ship. Almost nine hours after the Black Freighter had appeared in the Yangon port, it was surrounded by Burmese naval vessels, all with their guns trained on the intruding ship. The broadcast was made one more time, ordering the ship to leave Burmese waters, this time with the threat of being blown out of the water for no compliance. But again, there was no response. The Burmese Navy made good on their threat and unleashed everything they had on the Hulken Iron Vessel. And when the smoke cleared, nothing remained. No slowly sinking wreck, no debris, not an ounce of wreckage. Just clear, open water where once there had been a ship. Oh, not this again. I am terribly sorry for this. It will only take a second. Come on, bloody thing. Please stop saving the whales, 
the outnumber is 3 to 1, and they are organised. You're listening to 2020 Pablo, the easy listening station, like moonbeams on a country lane. Folks, just because I was fired by Blaze Rock FM and bumped off to easy listening, doesn't make me any less of a man, even if my bitch of an ex-wife says so. And now we got a zinger of a tune. It's Whiskey Rebellion with their tunes Sing Along Funeral Songs. Sit upon a throne of gold They got more money than a man could spend But death will take us all in the end And when the tombs are rest Up on the ground above your chest Nobody knows what pleasure death may bring And if you listen well You'll hear the ringing gates of hell Join us as we curse and swear and sing Sing our love funeral songs It's a rebel and remorse Sing our love funeral songs Everybody grab a corpse Songs be a bastard whilst alive. Sing that long funeral songs, cause everybody la da 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 da. Everybody la da 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 da. Everybody la da 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 da. Everybody la da 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 da. Everybody la da 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 da. Again, I apologize uh, for the loss of signal. And now we begin the nightly report.
You found me. I don't know how, but it did. You found me. Don't. No one try to help. Don't. Don't come here. Just. I don't know what to do. I think this is it. I think this is it. No one tried to help. Just. Just stay away. Stay away. <laughs> Gloria Fisher, a 12-year-old child who was reported missing two months ago in Ireland, has reappeared this week in counties Cavan, Galway, Dublin, Kilkenny and Tipperary. Gloria's head was found in County Cavan, her left arm in Dublin, her right in Galway, her left leg in Kilkenny, her right in Tipperary. Her torso has yet to be found. Sources say that the body was dismembered with a high level of precision and professionalism. The cuts were clean causing a minimum of unnecessary damage to the surrounding tissues. Remarkably, the bones were entirely undamaged. Foul play is, as one might presume, suspected. When the police were contacted for further information on this investigation, they would say only that the investigation has been taken over by a branch of the Irish military and was considered a matter of national security. The individual who has discovered the head, who wishes to remain anonymous, said that at first he thought he'd found a doll. The hair was perfectly clean, without a trace of blood. She was wearing makeup that seemed to have been done with care, and her hair was styled in immaculate curls. The discoveries of Gloria's other extremities are unwilling to comment. At this juncture, I wish to point out that if you are to draw a line connecting each and exact location where a body part was found, it would form the shape of a five-pointed star. Have you witnessed a supernatural event? Have you had an encounter with an entity you cannot explain? Do you have vital information for people around the world? If so, I will be happy to relay it. Please send all reports to the host switchboard, all one word, at gmail.com. For now, this is the host, reminding you never go at night, never go alone, and Always go armed. The Switchboard is a Hog and Dice production, written and directed by Stephen Jack Cullen, with music by Thomas O'Boyle and Kevin MacLeod. The voice of the host was Keith Byrne. You can find out more and see our other projects at hoganddice.com. This episode's broadcast failure was performed by Anthea West, Ashling McCabe, Stephen Jack Cullen, and Connor Lennon. The song was Sing Along Funeral Songs by The Whiskey Rebellion. You can find out more on Facebook at facebook.com slash the.whiskey.rebellion.music or SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash thewhiskeyrebellionmusic. If you're in Dublin city centre and are looking for a place to take shelter from the sudden rain of frogs, why not drop into the Clockwork Door? They have a games room, a study room, a fully stocked kitchen, and a board games and reading room. You only have to pay for the time you spend there, and rates start at 8 cent a minute for your first two hours. Find out more at clockworkdoor.ie. If you enjoyed today's episode, maybe you'd also like Existential Dread.